Well, when you hear the words asthma and cats, you may be thinking that if you have asthma, you should probably avoid cats. But did you know cats themselves can have asthma? I know I didn't. Our pet vet, Dr. David Visser, joins us now in the studio to help us learn more about this situation. Good morning to you. Good morning, Kate. Asthma is uh, one of those tricky things, but a lot of people are familiar with it because it can occur in people. Well, it happens in a very similar sort of way in cats, that the, um, the constriction of the airways prevents the breathing, and it gets into one of these escalation effects where mucus kind of builds up in the lower airways, and that causes then even further constriction and inflammation. And when cats can't breathe very well, well, they get into a respiratory crisis. And they say that this is pretty similar to the way it happens in people as well. Okay. Well, but people tend to have some signs and, um, and, um, and changes in their respiratory airways, sure. even independent of whether they're in a flare-up, where we don't really know that about cats. We call it asthma, but we're not really sure if it's exactly the same as in people. Okay, so cats and people, t separate asthma situations. How is it diagnosed in cats? Well, there are some th things that are very important to do. First of all, at home we need to recognize that cats are in a discomfort uh, situation. Bringing them into the veterinary in the initial examination typically shows a cat that is having labored breathing, not very deep breathing, not moving a lot of air, and not very active. They may not have felt like eating or drinking, so this initial examination will show a lot of signs of dehydration, maybe falling behind in weight. But after that, the x-rays of the chest are going to be important because we can see certain uh, hallmarks on the x-rays that tell us that this is probably an asthma situation. It's actually not that they are more congested. Hmm. It actually looks almost as if there's more air in the lungs because air gets trapped on inhalation and they can't exhale it. This is why the difficulty and the pain. Lung fluid analysis is also important, but as you can imagine, these cats that are in this acute crisis may not be in a condition to, to be anesthetized or sedated to get fluid from the lungs. So that might be after we do the initial management. And it may be weird to see a heartworm test on there, uh -huh. but in actuality, heartworm in cats is more of a respiratory disease wow. than it is a heart disease. And most cats will show signs of uh, asthma when they have heartworm. So that's an important but odd kind of request at the time of the exam. Well, I bet this is pretty scary for pet owners, oh, yeah. so what can they do about treating this? Is it long-term, short-term? Well, there's many different uh, medications that are available, and uh, sometimes we use um, a medication, in fact, as a test. Uh, this medication, uh, long-acting cortisone-type medicine, might be one of the medications we use initially. But it's not necessarily desirable for pets to be on long-term cortisone medications, so other things are used instead or in addition. Airway dilators, similar to what's used in people, will help, as I said, open up those airways. And antihistamines is on the list, but interestingly, one difference between cats and people is that histamine causes narrowing of the airways in people. Antihistamines, therefore, would open it up. There's some thought that antihistamines will actually constrict the airways a little bit in cats because histamine has an effect of opening up the airways. But there's also the use of medications that can help reduce the cortisone dependence. Even though cortisone type medicines work real well, uh, some of the medications like, um, ac I think it's called Accolate, uh, is used in people. That can also be used in cats to help lower the dependence on cortisone. And interestingly, cyclosporin, a medication that's commonly used to keep uh, individuals from rejecting organ transplant has been used to kind of suppress the immune system and stop this alert uh, allergic reaction that's going on in the respiratory tract. Wow, now I hope this doesn't sound silly, but can cats use an inhaler? I know a lot of people <laughs> use that to treat their asthma. Inhalers are actually a very good thing. Uh, they can be used in cats. Uh, the difficulty is that they don't, uh, you can't tell them when to breathe, but they also don't like the actuation when you actually make that aerosol with the spritz. So the way that this is managed is the way that it's managed in children or people pediatric situations. We're taking a look at it right now, right? This exactly, is it? Exactly, yeah. Okay. So the inhaler is attached over to the right end and then that chamber actually collects that aerosol and then the mask is applied to the cat's face and then after about six or seven um, inhalations they have essentially dosed themselves with that medic medicine. Wow. If you were to use that uh, inhaler spray uh, to a cat they just don't like that uh, no. sound, that feel, and so that's what we use instead. And that works for a majority of cats and also helps then to avoid long-term use of cortisone type medicines. Sure, well I've certainly learned a lot this morning. Thank you so much. If You're you welcome. want to contact our pet vet, Dr. Visser, you can reach him at the Center for Animal Health by calling 888-PETS-VETS or you can always shoot him an email, michianapetvet at comcast.net. We'll be right back. Stay with us.